We've spent three videos on exponentials. By now, you're probably saying, Jason, I want some logarithms. Well, as you wish. So we're going to start with some rules, just like we did with the exponential functions. Let's say we've got three rules for you here. One of them you've definitely seen before. Two of them, probably not. And that says that the antiderivative of 1 over x with respect to x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. So we know that the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x, and it turns out that we can make this even, even more general by saying that the natural log of absolute value of x, which basically just reflects, makes the natural log have this reflected. Normally natural log is only that. But when we add an absolute value there, we increase the domain, we expand the domain, be like that. So um, this is just useful in, in the event that we do want to work with negative numbers. It's true because 1 over x has a domain of positive and negative numbers, kind of like this shape. All right, so that's what we have. That's the first one. The second one, uh, I'm going to leave blank for a second and say that it is uh, x times the natural log of x minus 1 plus c. I don't need to fill this in. You can fill this in. You might say, but how? I don't know this. You don't, but you do know how to find it. And then we can leave something else blank and write that it's x over the natural log of a times ln x minus 1 plus c. So remember that these are just formulas for antiderivatives. And in, if we take the derivative of this right-hand side, we should get the integrand. So let's just check. Let's see, what, what is this formula that I'm giving you? What is it? Well, what's the derivative of this? We're going to have to use the product rule. The derivative of the first guy times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of a constant zero. This is just natural log of x minus one plus one. That's the formula for the antiderivative of the natural log of x. So it's kind of a weird one. It's not as nice as you might think it is. Um, and then similarly, this is for log base a of x. Again, you can see these are almost the same formula. Just dividing by that natural log of the base, whatever that base is. So we can use these in this section. The first rule, much, much, much more common than the other ones. Example six. Evaluate antiderivative of 2x cubed plus 3x over x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Now, don't get overwhelmed. You might say, Jason, first off, this has nothing to do with exponentials or logarithms. Second off, that's a lot. Well, have a little faith and do things step by step. So, we have a quotient here. There's no quotient rule for integrals, not really. Quotients are really just two things multiplied by each other, two fractions multiplied. Well, what, what tools do we have? Uh, we could maybe try long division or something, but the, the, the exponent, the, the degree of the polynomial on the bottom is higher than the top, so that's probably not going to help. Any other way that we can rewrite this algebraically, we could split this into one fraction, plus another fraction, but again, that's not really going to help us. Um, we know u substitutions, but what would u be? There's no real inside function here. The, the only stretch of the imagination that we can get to is, is well, if this were u, it's, it's, a, it's a polynomial with a 4 and a 2 as exponents. Well, this is a polynomial with a 3 and the 1. Maybe it'll work. Let's try it. 
If you use the denominator, what happens? x to the fourth plus 3x squared. We get du dx equals 4x cubed plus 6x. Oh, that's close, right? That's just double what we have. So we can get this by multiplying this by 2 and dividing by 2. So du is going to be 4x cubed plus 6x dx, which we now have. All right? Distribute this, 4x cubed plus 6x dx. Let's do one intermediate step. This is 1 half times the integral of 1 over x to the fourth plus 3x squared times 4x cubed plus 6x dx. Optional step completely. All I did was distribute this 2 and write the division as multiplication. But now everything in blue is just du. And this is just 1 over u. So we get 1 half the integral of 1 over u du. Looked real messy, but you find that right u? You find yourself. You find the right u. And everything comes into focus. Antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. That's another reason why it's important to have the absolute value. We don't need to worry about whether u is positive or negative. So this will be 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which is 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of x to the fourth plus 3x squared. And this is not my final answer. It's still not my final answer. Why not? We can simplify a little bit. I know I made a big deal about the absolute values, but they're redundant here. If x is real, this is always positive and this is always positive, or zero. So we're only dealing with real numbers, so in this case, the absolute values are redundant and we can get rid of them. Again, because that's never negative. And that's our answer. And we check our answer again by taking the derivative. Take the derivative. We get 1 half times the derivative of natural log is 1 over that thing. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. It's going to be 4x cubed plus 6x. The 1 half cancels with this to become a 2, cancels with this to become a 3. And that's going to give us... 2x cubed plus 3x over x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Please tell me that's what we started with. There it is. Great way to check your answer. And review your derivative rules while you're at it. What is this doing here? I'm out of order, guys. Two part B, antiderivative of log base two of x dx. This is just practice using that rule. Antiderivative of log base two. Just this formula when a is two. That's all you do. Just write two for a and then there you have it. Let's copy this down. And then so in part B, right, it's just going to be A is 2. We're going to be absolute, sorry, the integral of log base 2 of x dx is just x divided by the natural log of A, which is 2, times ln x minus 1 plus C. And that's the only thing to it. Could also check your answer here with the product rule. And the final one here, let's get into a definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 
of sine of x divided by 1 plus cosine of x. So again, this is another example where it doesn't appear like there's any exponentials or logarithms. But we have a quotient. Can maybe try to simplify this with trig properties. Um, could multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus cosine. That would make your denominator sine squared. And you could simplify a little bit. Actually, I think that'd work. I think you can. I think you can do it this way. But there's an easier way with the u substitution. I think you can do it that way. Uh, this, is the last, this is the last one of the video. So we're just going to do it the right way, the way the book wants you to do it. And then we're going to see if there's a clever trig way that we can do it too. But you don't have to watch that second part. Let's see. So I'm going to choose you to be this denominator, knowing I'm choosing this with an informed guess. Because if this denominator is you, what's the derivative of our denominator? Negative sign. So if this denominator is you, then this is going to be very closely related to our du, and we're going to get some nice stuff. So du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x is negative sine of x. So all we need, we already have the sine, all we need for du is a negative, which we can multiply by a negative as long as we also multiply by a second negative. We get negative integral. Oh, what do our limits become? If x is 0, u is 1 plus cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So the lower limit becomes 2. And if x is pi over 2, what happens to u? u is 1 plus cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Think the unit circle for those quadrantal angles. And again, it's OK that 2 is on the bottom. And then what happens is this blue stuff is just du. And all that we're left with is 1 over u. There's that intermediate step I did earlier of splitting up this fraction to really see where this is coming from. You can take it or not take it as you prefer. And now the antiderivative of 1 over u is just the natural log of the absolute value of u evaluated between 2 and 1. This looks a little weird with the absolute values, so make sure that this vertical bar is like a bigger size than your absolute values. So we're going to get the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 2. And the negatives out in front. The natural log of 1 is 0. And we get negative negative ln of 2, which is just ln of 2 as our final answer. That's the area under this curve between 0 and pi over 2. The net signed area. Because remember, if there's positive and negative areas. Then we take the positive area and we subtract the area below the x-axis. Negative area is not a real thing, but when I say negative area, I usually mean area under the x-axis. That's one way of doing this problem. Now, if you want, that's the end of the video. Quick warning, not everything that has a log will be obvious. It's not obvious that this is going to involve a logarithm. Similarly, some problems have logs in them, but they actually might have nothing to do with logarithms after the fact. So watch out for that. You'll probably see what I mean when you get into some of the more gnarly homework problems. And if you want some bonus mathematics free of charge, let's see if we can try to do this integral a different way. Okay, completely optional. Pause, get rid of the video right now. Finish the video. Go away. Unless you want to check this out. We can explore together. I don't care about the definite integral. I just want to see if we can take the integral. Because I think this trick will work. So what I'm thinking is addition on the denominator is always bad. If we can get addition on the numerator instead, that's better. That's where I came up with the idea to multiply this by 1 minus cosine of x. Because that's going to let us use a Pythagorean identity in the denominator. So that's going to, oh, this might not work. Oh, I see. I think I see where this is going. Let's see. So if we do that, 
the denominator becomes something nice. Oh, no, it, I, it does work. I'm going to keep switching back and forth between saying it works and doesn't work every step. The Pythagorean identity says that the, the no, denominator is just sine squared of x. And anytime you're simplifying a fraction, remember, if you're simplifying a fraction, you want to leave things factored, if you can, to see if things cancel. You'll sometimes have to foil it out to combine like terms, but we don't have to here. So one of these sine of x's cancels with one of these sine of x's. And now we know this is just 1 minus cosine of x over sine. Now this looks very similar to what we started with. But why it's nicer is exactly what I was saying earlier. Now the addition and subtraction is in the top instead of the bottom. And the reason why that's nice is we can now split up the fraction. This is 1 over sine of x minus cosine over sine of x. Well, what is that? The antiderivative of cosecant of x minus cotangent of x. I'd have to check my formula, but they involve natural logs. Okay. Um, crap. <laughs> what is the... What is the formula for the antiderivative uh, um, of uh, reciprocal trig functions? I don't have these memorized. No, not inverse trig functions, Google. Oh my goodness. Disaster. I'm typing... I'm typing reciprocal in a Google and it's giving me all these results on inverses. All right, we'll just do this the smart way then. I'll just pull up, uh, pull up our actual textbook from Calc 1 and go to 4.10 with that table. But yeah, yeah, the short answer, right, is that yes, it, it works just like I thought it would work. So the antiderivative of cosecant. <laughs> it's not on this table. So you can, you can find these out, by the way. We'll do these by hand later um, by uh, using integration by parts. And actually, the second one, the integral of cotangent, can be um, actually uh, derived by using a u-substitution. So the second one can be derived with the u-substitution. And this first one can be derived with integration by parts, I'm pretty sure. Not 100% confident, but pretty sure. But anyway, yeah, so this could, uh, I guess it wouldn't work for you guys right now, but it does work eventually. And that's why I said, do the use substitution. And that's the end of the video. I don't know how, but something got, somehow this video got all out of order. With, or the, the, the notes did. Anyway, bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the bonus mathematics and uh, let me know if you have questions.